All right, in our last lesson in this unit, we are going to take a look at inequality applications. We did equation applications a little a few days ago, and now we're going to look at the inequality ones. Okay, so in this question, it says the population of a city is modeled by this equation, P at T. Uh, notice it's a quadratic, uh, where P at T is the population in thousands, and T is the number of years since 2000. And it's asking when will the population be less than 330,000. Okay, now one thing to note right away is that the population is measured in thousands. So when I'm asking you when will the population be less than 330,000, that actually means when will this equation be less than 330. Okay, and if you caught that already on your own, then that's really great. Okay, so just like we did with all of our inequalities algebraically, we're going to move everything to one side and simplify. We're going to get 0 0.5 t squared plus 10t, and then you can see we're going to get minus 130 is less than 0. Okay, and so now we want to take this and we would try to factor it. If it factored, if it doesn't factor, we're going to use the quadratic formula. If it was cubic or quartic, then of course it would need to at least have one um, whole number as a factor for you to be able to solve it. So this one doesn't actually factor, so we can go ahead and solve for t using the quadratic formula. So we're going to get negative 10 plus or minus in our square root, we're going to get 100 minus 4 times 0.5 times negative 130. And when you do that math, you're going to get 360 under the radical. And of course, 2 times 1, that's actually all over 1, so that's kind of nice. So we need some approximations of this to have some idea of what we're talking about here. Um, especially since now we're talking about an application question, so the decimal really does make sense. So when we do negative 10 plus the square root of 360, we get about 8.97. Two decimal places is good. And when we do negative 10 minus the square root of 360, we get negative 28.97. Okay, so we're going to need to set up our interval table now, as we do for all inequalities algebraically. Okay, and of course we want our intervals. We want when t is less than negative 28.97. We want in between those two numbers. And when t is greater than 8.97. Okay, now over here at the left, we really just have the function. We really just have our f of x. So since it didn't factor, there's not much else we can do here. So what we have is we have our 0.5t squared plus 10t minus 130. Ah, I can't seem to get that to right. 130. Should be like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and check that. So if we put in a number like negative 30, Okay, you're going to plug in negative 30, see what happens. You're going to get positive, positive, subtract 130. I believe that's going to end up being that. We can easily put in 0, and we can see that that's going to be negative 130. And then we'll put in a number like 10, or something greater than 8.97, and we're going to get positive. Okay, so right here is our answer. Of course, that's when the population is less than 330,000. Okay, and we need to just now make sure, of course, with an application question that we interpret that. Okay, so what did we find out then? We found out that the population is less than 330,000. When, okay. T is approximately between, let's just round, negative 29 and 9. Okay, now what does that really mean? That means, okay, and some of you might say, well, you can't have a negative T, but you can in this case because T was defined as T equals 0 being 
the year 2000. So negative 29, okay, would actually mean between 1971, right, 21, 29 years ago from 2000, and 2009. Okay, and that interpretation is important. You have to have that sentence and you need to make that conclusion. Okay? All right, let's go on and try another one here. Okay, here we are installing a flower garden. It's estimated that we need at least 100 meters cubed of earth. So, of course, that's the volume of the garden. What are the minimum dimensions of the garden? If the depth must equal two more than one quarter of the width, and the length must be 12 more than four times the width. So we're just testing your algebra skills here a little bit. Hopefully you can see that the width is actually the smallest. So I always like to start there. And how about we let x be the width. Okay, so then we have our depth or our height, which we know is two more than one quarter, so one quarter of the width plus two is our depth or our height. And 12 more than four times the width, so we have our 4x plus 12 is going to be our length. Okay, and we need at least 100 meters cubed of earth, so that means that we need that volume, of course, to be greater than or equal to 100. Okay, so let's set up our expression for volume. We've got x, we have a quarter, x plus 2, and we have 4x plus 12, and we need that to be greater than or equal to 100. Okay, so just like always, we need to move everything to one side, um, and we want to simplify that, and we want to expand that, and then we're going to actually have to factor that. Okay, so we're going to do that. Good thing. There we have our polynomial. Now we're going to need to factor that. Looks like 2 is going to work. We're going to do our synthetic division. Okay, so then we found out, therefore then what do we have? We have x minus 2, x squared, plus 13x plus 50, and what we're checking to see is when that's greater than or equal to 0. Let's find our zeros. Here we know that x equals 2. Here we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, and when we do that we're going to get negative 13, plus or minus, we get negative 31 all over 2. So we are going to discard these ones. Make sure you know why. We are discarding them because they're imaginary, so they are obviously not places where the function will change signs from positive to negative or change from being greater than 0 to less than 0, so we can actually discard them. So then we just have to do a quick check with our little chart, with our interval table here. We have when x is less than 2, and we have when x is greater than 2. Okay, and we're checking in x minus 2, we're checking in 
x squared plus 13x plus 50. One can actually see that that's always positive, and then we have the overall. Okay, so here when we put negative, here we're going to put a 3 in. We're going to get positive, positive, overall negative, overall positive. And there's our answer then right here, right? This is our answer. So therefore, then we need to go back to the original problem, and we just need to conclude. Okay, so we know, sorry, it went on to another page there. I'll move that in a minute. We want to know the minimum dimensions. So our minimum dimensions is when x is, the width is at least 2 meters, right? And then we want to solve for the rest of our dimensions here. So if we have 2 here, then we know that the depth is, the height is 2.5 meters. We know that the length is 20 meters. I think, believe we're working in meters. Yeah, we're working in meters. And so those dimensions will give us a volume of at least 100 meters cubed, right? So then we just need a nice conclusion at the end. Therefore, the dimensions are width of 2 meters, depth of 2.5 meters, and a length of 20 meters, at least, right? It can be greater than that would also obviously give us a volume of more than 100 meters cubed. Okay, so you have to go back and then relate it to the original question. Okay, we're going to practice a few of those in class tomorrow. No new concepts, really just making sure you can understand the words. Thanks.